Hello everybody, welcome to another video of Crossover. Today we are going to be talking about our view of how parents should be. So, without further ado, we are just going to hop straight into the verse that we have. The verses that we have actually are Proverbs chapter 23, verse 24 through 25. They say, The father of godly children has cause for joy. What a pleasure to have children who are wise. So give your father and mother joy. May she who gave you birth be happy. So what I want to talk about is how, as I said in the beginning, how parents should be, or how I think parents should be, how we think parents should be. And we think is that parents need to, well, in the Bible, it does say, you know, to discipline your child and to do all this stuff to make sure is that they stay on the right path. And God wants you to, because God gives you this child. God gives you this child for a reason, and you need to make sure is that they grow up with a good foundation, with God and uh, rules and stuff that they can base their whole life on. And when you have a child, you know, and they do something wrong, you know, what do you do? You tell them, no, that's wrong. You know, don't do that. You know, it could get you hurt. It could get you in trouble. You know, whatever the case may be, you know, and you tell them not to do it. You make sure that they don't do it because you don't want them to get hurt or to get in trouble. And God is the same exact way. God will do the same exact thing. He will discipline you and just because he doesn't want you to get hurt. He doesn't want you to get hurt. He doesn't want you to get in trouble. And that's the same with your parents. Your parents, parents do not want their children, hopefully, to get hurt and to end up in trouble. They want their children to have a good life. They want their children to be growing up doing something in their life and have a good life. And God, again, is the same way. God wants us to have a good life, have a comfortable life. And that's the same with our parents. Parents need to train their kids to do things. They need to train their kids to, you know, go out there and, you know, get a job, you know, do this, do that, you know, and they do all this so that you can better yourself and so that the children can, you know, end up having a good life in the long run. That's the end goal, I think, for all parents. They want their children to have a good life. They want their children to have a comfortable life. That's what every parent wants. And God wants their parent God wants the parents to train the children how to do things and he wants them to really set boundaries and rules as I said so that the children can have a foundation of what they're to do, what they're to do and what they're not to do. And with kids, kids are, I mean, there are a lot of kids nowadays, you know, that don't really want to do anything, you know, they they can be pretty lazy and so on. But you can't really blame the kids for being lazy or for doing wrong. In the end of the day, it comes back to the parents and how they raise their kids. And kids are only doing what they know to do. And if you as a parent aren't training your children what to do and what not to do, what's right and what's wrong, then they're not going to know what to do and they're just going to do whatever's best, whatever's easier, and take that path. And God doesn't want that because that eventually ends up, you know, ends them in jail because, you know, they want quick money, they want easy money. So what do they do? They go and rob a store or whatever, and they end up in jail. And no parent wants that for their children. And if you don't train your child and you don't tell them what's wrong and what's right, then they end up making that up themselves. They end up telling themselves, you know, what's wrong and what's right based on the things that they see. And children are little sponges, so they see what's going on around them. And if they're not told what's wrong and what's right, 
then they have no base level knowledge on the rules and morals. God wants us, or God wants parents to train the children, to tell them what's right and wrong so that they don't steer down a wrong path, so that they don't get hurt. And I'm pretty sure is that all parents want the best for their children, you know? All parents want what's best. They don't want them to get hurt. They don't want them to end up homeless. They don't want them to end up in jail. They don't want them to end up in poverty. They don't want them to end up like that. So what they do is they push their children and they make them better. They make them do things that they thought they couldn't do. And what happens in the long run is eventually they get to the point in life where they are just living comfortably then. And in the Bible, it does say, you know, is that, and I don't want to quote, but it says something along the lines of, you know, how if a child listens to their parent, you know, listens to their instructions, then they're wise. If they, you know, ignore them and just kind of shoo it away, then they're, um, I wouldn't, I don't think it said dumb, but wouldn't, I think it said fool or something like that. And, um... God wants us to uh, really listen to our parents because, as I said, parents, you know, they, most of the time, they want what's best for us. They want to better us. They want to make sure is that everything that we're doing is good so that we don't end up hurt, so that we don't end up in trouble with the law or whatever. And God wants us to listen to our parents. God wants the kids to listen to their parents so that they can better their lives. And God wants the parents to discipline and set ground rules for the children so that they can know what's wrong and what's right. Because otherwise, they can't know. You can't know exactly what's wrong and what's right if you don't, if you aren't taught. So, with this all being said, we're going to have uh, the verse of the week. So... Josiah, would you like to give us the verse of the week? The verse of the week is from Proverbs chapter 22, verse 6. It says, Direct your children onto the right path, and when they are older, they will not leave it. It is saying that if a child grows up in church and they get used to that lifestyle, once they move out and start living on their own, they will most likely keep that lifestyle. Yeah. Now, that, that goes back to the whole training your child you know if you don't teach them what's right and what's wrong then they have no way of telling what's right and what's wrong if they're not told yeah kids may be sponges but if they aren't taught if they aren't told that this is wrong this is right you need to do this and not this then they won't know and eventually if they're not taught at all the world will be teaching them what's easiest, what's quick money, you know, what's, you know, the easiest way to do this, easiest way to do that, you know, the quickest, it all has to do with quick schemes and all this stuff, you know, so that you can get stuff fast. And God doesn't want that because eventually it leads to destruction and someone getting hurt. So... With this all being said, we are going to have an opportunity for you guys to accept Jesus in your life, to have a relationship with him. Maybe uh, you're saying, you know, I want to accept Jesus in my life. What exactly does this do? What this does, short answer, is it allows you to go to heaven. And if you don't go to heaven, there's only one other place for you, and that is hell. Hell is the complete opposite of heaven. Heaven is this amazing, nice, you know, no pain, no sorrow, no negative things, no, no nothing bad is in heaven. And in hell, it is the complete opposite. Torture, torment, pain, suffering, you know, all the bad. And God wants us to go to heaven, you know, go back where we belong. Originally, hell was not made for people, but... God cannot be in your sin, so if you don't ask for forgiveness, if you don't accept Jesus in your life, then he 
can't be near you. You can't be near sin. So there's only one other place for you to go. So if you want to, if you want to accept Jesus in your life, have a relationship with him, then I want you to say this prayer with us. Dear Lord, I thank you for today. I thank you for the good and the bad because I know everything works for your good. And dear Lord, I believe that you sent your son, Jesus Christ, to die on the cross for my sins and everybody else's. I believe that with all my heart. I pray that you give me your Holy Spirit and that you fire up your Holy Spirit in me, Lord. I believe that with all my heart. I cannot thank you enough for everything that you've done. I give you my life and I give you my all, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, if you said that prayer, congratulations, welcome to the family of God. And if you like this video, like, subscribe, share, comment, do all that, stay up to date with everything that we're doing. And yeah, we'll see you guys in the next video. We hope you have a wonderful, blessed, fantastic, amazing night, the evening, whichever it is for you. And we'll see you guys in the next video. Goodbye.